All right, everybody, for everyone who's uh, back, uh, welcome back, and I hope you had a good lunch. My name is Alex Hall. I work with Thermo Fisher Scientific, supporting Amira and Aviso software. Those are image analysis softwares. And specifically, in a very brief talk, I'm going to introduce a fairly new software we released late last year called Aviso 2D. Okay, so let me put it in, in presenter mode. Okay, so you should be able to see my mouse if needed. All right, so Aviso 2D is a, uh, as its name suggests, based on Aviso software, which is a 3D image processing and image analysis software. And uh, it's really focused on automating 2D image analysis. So the typical user is going to be someone with access to a microscope or microscope images. So it doesn't have to be installed on the same computer that uh, the image acquisition is taking place on. Um, these are typically going to be a series of images of very similar samples, and you would like to extract meaning out of those data. So questions you might have, um, is your image quality good enough for image processing? Um, did you collect enough data? Uh, do you have enough time to um, collect the images and analyze the data, especially relevant in industry where uh, time is really, really important <laughs> and expensive? Um, we released Viso 2D software to answer many of these questions. So what is it? Um, it is a image processing toolkit. Again, um, it includes within it capabilities for deep learning, uh, AKA machine learning uh, possibilities. Um, it includes Python under the hood. And we also package it with a online uh, repository of recipes which I will share with you in just a moment. And most interestingly, I think, we have the capability of doing very interactive image processing recipe creation. Um, so I'll be showing that off today. Uh, basically, you would import data, create a recipe based on traditional image processing or machine learning, and output some kind of analysis, whether that's a count of objects, very, very simple kind of analysis, or something more complex, like the shape factor, the anisotropic factor, sphericity, you name it. We also will have a version that's not officially released yet, but coming soon, that's integrated uh, into MAPS software which is sold on some of our SEM and TEM microscopes. Um, and this is going to allow for in maps analysis, image analysis during acquisition. I'll demonstrate more of what that looks like tomorrow when I discuss deep learning as a general topic. So here's what a uh, possible workflow might look like. On the left, we have a EDS image. So this is X-ray um uh imagery that highlights different elemental uh signals and it's been colorized in red green and blue and you may wish to count particles and measure the size distribution of the different elements separately so from this one image we could measure the three uh, colors of data which are corresponding to the different elements and then create a size distribution. A similar kind of workflow um, would be to take a SEM image as shown here and look for the porosity in that kind of an image. Um, this is pretty easy to do in our software. And a final example would be to count spherical particles in an image where some are 
closer to the detector and some are farther away and partially occluded. So you may wish to emit background particles. So let's actually show you the software. Um, Aviso 2D is packaged in three components. One is called the analyzer, and then there's two others, one called the labeler, and a third called the trainer. I'm gonna start by discussing the analyzer. What you would do is import your data, run a recipe on it, and then run a label analysis on it. So this is an example of a SEM image that has particles that are considered um, individual separate particles or agglomerates. And the agglomerates are highlighted in red and the individual particles are highlighted in blue. We were able to do that using image processing and filtering based on a sphericity factor. So if it was more circular, then it was highlighted in blue. And if it was less circular, it was highlighted in red. And then you could calculate shape distribution statistics on those separately. Um, so let me load in a, uh, a brand new image and I'll show you just how quick the uh, creation of a recipe could be and also the running of a recipe. So you start the analyzer here. I would like to open some data. Of course, we have uh, some tutorial data. I'm going to load in some uh, images that I showed you just then in the PowerPoint um, of some titanium powder. This would be used for additive manufacturing. It's a very common thing in uh, commercial applications to inspect the components used for 3D printing with metals. But you need to actually ensure that the the particle distribution is what you're expecting. So when you first import data, uh, many microscopes burn in a bar at the bottom of the image, which includes metadata. This is useful for a human observer, but when it comes to uh, computer vision, that bar actually is confounding. So we're gonna extract our meaning out of it, in this case, the scale, and then uh, crop it out of the image. So this prompt right here is asking me to place two points, either um, on a scale bar or just specify our knowledge of the scale of the image. So I click twice to set a scale on the scale bar. And because it's labeled, I know that's 30 microns. And now I know my pixel size for the image. Then I'm prompted to crop the image. I just want to eliminate that bottom portion and click finish. The data are now imported. And by zooming in on it, you can see the quality of the image. You can pan around and there's a dynamic scale bar. Nothing too fancy, but just demonstrating how you would be able to observe your 2D image. Um, of course, I've cropped out the bottom of the image, so it is slightly altered from the original image. Now, if you already had a recipe that you'd created, um, which I do, uh, you would load one in, click apply, and the output would be displayed automatically on the screen. So here we've segmented out uh, spherical particles in the foreground. Those are shown with a repeating map of eight colors. So there are far more than eight particles, so you see the same color showing up multiple times. We can then run an analysis of the particle shape uh, by under here where it says label analysis. We could click apply. And now we have a very comprehensive list of statistics of individual particles. I could uh, isolate individual particles by clicking the seek button and finding them like that. So that way you would know which particle is corresponding to what measure. So we have information about the size, of course, width, length, but also shapeness factors corresponding to like the Fourier diameter and uh, you know, the, the Fourier dimensions, um, which are dynamic for each particle. We also get shape factors such as anisotropy, um, 
the elongation factor and the perimeter and the area, things like that. This could then be exported to uh, Excel or just a text document, and you could run statistical analysis in your software of choice. So for many people, that's good enough. You know, you don't need to uh, muck about with more complex image processing. And if you're not an image processing expert, but one of your colleagues is, this program is very simple to use. So you could reuse someone else's existing recipe. Um, so let me show you a little bit about what that image processing uh, actually looks like step by step. So I already had loaded a recipe here, and you can see the path. Um, if I click Edit Workflow, I will be placed into a workflow editing mode. And here you'll be able to see uh, a side-by-side -side viewer of the before and after individual steps. This is very useful for testing the parameters of image processing. This updates automatically. So for instance, if I wanted to increase the amount of smoothing, which is my first step, a Gaussian smoothing filter, I could experiment just by typing in a new smoothing parameter. And you'll notice that all of the downstream steps updated. So by changing this smoothing parameter, I get an updated visual preview, as well as all of the downstream steps have been updated. So you can see the effects of adjusting a step at any point along this workflow. And you could then save this workflow and run it on the same data or new data sets. Um, at the upper left of the screen, we have a list of image processing steps. So this would include really basic things such as smoothing, sharpening, but also um, you know, some of the FFT uh, discussion that was just being um, you know, discussed in pretty great detail in the last presentation. Image enhancement filters, such as uh, finding membranes and images, uh, finding edges. And then once you've enhanced the image somewhat, if that was necessary, you can then possibly do some kind of segmentation on the data. Um, so just due to the limits of time, I don't have the luxury of going through individual workflows, um, but uh, that's, that's where filling out that form on the website earlier would be very useful if you want to get in contact with us uh, for a particular workflow, we would be happy to assist you with that. So here you can just see um, the steps. I'm just walking through the individual steps here. And eventually you're getting to a labeled image filtered by the uh, rugosity, which is a roughness measurement. So the, the really rough features uh, like this one right here with sharp edges are emitted and the mostly spherical particles are retained. So the other two components of our software are designed for training and um, also generating training data for machine learning, specifically using a hierarchy called UNET, which is a kind of image classification. Um, currently, we're working with a binary classification scheme. So you can segment and uh, produce a model for one label at a time. So for instance, in the Aviso 2D labeler right here, I have a directory that is filled with uh, serial TEM images of a brain from a fly, a Drosophila. And I have segmentation data of the mitochondria overlaid on top of it with a yellow color. So this program, the labeler, allows you to interactively click and drag around features. And if you're not satisfied with your drawing, you'd be able to click and drag individual points 
So there is the ability to completely, uh, you know, reshape any selection you've made. Okay. Once you move to another image or click the perspective button, you would rasterize this selection. And now you can see the pixelated edges. This is now a uh, label data set that you would use for um, deep learning purposes. I'll discuss the principles of that a little bit more in detail. And I know the ORS team tomorrow afternoon is going to be discussing deep learning. So it's not my intention to uh, claim that I've just taught you deep learning by showing this to you. Um, and I, I won't have the time to do that. Uh, the third part of our software is called the Aviso 2D Trainer. This is a very simple interface for getting started with uh, deep learning for image processing. You would uh, navigate to a directory, select your image and your label data, select the label that you actually want to train on, and then the rest of the steps here are just hyperparameters that you would use for a deep learning task. Again, something I'll discuss in a little bit more detail using Aviso tomorrow, not Aviso 2D. Um, you could use a pre-trained network. Uh, you can specify how long this uh, training should run for, different kinds of optimizers, which is uh, alluding to the first talk from today, the optimization problem. Um, you can uh, have the model stop early if a certain amount of improvement is reached per unit. And you can also perform data augmentation to increase your training data set size. Um, this software is written in three parts because there are different kinds of users when it comes to image processing. Not everybody who does image processing may want to do deep learning and machine learning. And you may want to do the training component, which is computationally intensive, on a dedicated machine that only does image processing. And so you would be able to do your tracing on pretty much any computer, including a, a notebook. Um, this is a very, very simple program. And it's automatically saving. So when I close the software or just move to a new slice, all of these results are automatically saved. I don't have to make any decisions about where to save the data. And then I might use that information on a shared network to uh, run deep learning on a dedicated workstation. <clears throat> that output model, I would be able to check it using TensorBoard, which is a popular browser-based way to inspect deep learning training uh, progress. Um, not going to go into the details of what you're looking at here, but just trying to point out that this is something that's packaged with the software. And then finally, back in the analyzer, which is uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of the software, you would be able to insert into your workflow a deep learning step. So for instance, right here, if um, if these particles were difficult to isolate from the background under AI here, I would be able to create a deep learning step and use my trained model. So before I go, I want to point out a few web-based resources. Of course, there's the um, registration page, which uh, would be valid for today and tomorrow. I hope you fill that out. This allows us to contact you and um, would allow you to learn more about this software. We also, of course, have our own website. So if you navigate to Thermo Fisher and type in Aviso 2D, you'd be able to find this web page where you could request a trial of the software. We also have links to use cases. Um, so we have a website called our use case gallery. This is a public facing repository that we curate. Uh, it's very visual. You would be able to look through here and see how people use our software. Now, if you're not a biologist, you are a material scientist, you may want to 
filter this by your domain, or if you have a particular application area, like you only work with SEM and you only care about SEM data, you could search for that kind of data really quickly. Um, and then the final point I think I wanna share is this page called our extras library. This is the recipe um, delivery tool I described earlier. So for instance, if I search for a Viso 2D, I would find a list of example data sets and the recipes used to generate these segmented images. This would be a great way to get started with image processing, to understand the steps involved, uh, learn the caveats of you know, how specific certain parameters are, how flexible things are. And then also tomorrow I'll discuss how to um, get started with deep learning which is uh, something that we're also supporting through this website.